The wind of change is sweeping across the world at a terrible pace, and all the loud noises, explosions that dot the landscape of the globe are nothing but symptoms of the death of an old order. Now, Africa has not been left out of the change, and right here in Nigeria, we are feeling the tightening too. But this time around, Africa cannot afford to sleep while the dynamics of change are playing out. Right now, the modern African experience is a product of engineering, failure engineering. And there's some things we need to do quickly because failure engineering can never be cured except by the use of algorithms. And we want to talk about one of the algorithms that Nigeria needs urgently and Nigeria needs right now. We are talking about foundation fathers. What Nigeria needs to understand is that we had liberators, people who help us to gain a freedom. But for some reason that we will explain later on, they were not permitted to lay a foundation on which a peaceful, God-fearing, progressive nation could be built. And once the foundations of a structure has been compromised, Listen, that foundation that is compromised never auto-corrects itself, and there's nothing that righteous men can do once the foundation is faulty. A faulty foundation left to itself is like a lie. After a thousand years, it will remain a lie. So what am I saying? If we want to look at the case studies we can learn from in the world when it comes to foundation engineering and the first algorithm that's extremely important, we'd be looking at cases like Israel, and more so the United States of America. We have a lot in common. Now, the founding fathers of the United States of America were worthy, weighty engineers who knew what to do. And I was saying at a meeting on a diplomatic table one day that Nigeria is exactly what the United States of America would have been were it not for the engineering, the social engineering of its founding fathers. So what's the difference between founding fathers and liberators? Africa's liberating fathers and the founding fathers that must emerge if we want a future. Now, people like John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, John Jay, Alexander Hamilton, we're talking about um, James Madison, Thomas Jefferson, and George Washington. These men are accepted as the founding fathers of America. Now, what they did was that they learned to design fractals of success, where Africa is a fractal of failures. So, America, many people may not know this, was also designed to fail. America originally was a product of failure engineering. They had the colonial experience that we had. Enslavement program had been practiced on them. They had the inferiority complexes. They had the divide and rule traits that dot Nigeria today, they have the same things, and what we call the Tashium Quid. Now, the Founding Fathers of America did a great job, and there are so many lessons that Nigeria needs to learn. This is how we'll learn the difference between what Founding Fathers are and liberators, and why Nigeria, an urgent algorithm, must locate its own Founding Fathers to complement the work done by our liberating fathers. Now, listen to this. America had been through an enslavement program just like Nigeria. They had the negative transculturation, the same inferiority complexes, the divide and rule effects were all over, the Tasham quid engineering that produces people who are emotive, intuitive, unscientific, and incapable of critical thought was the average citizen, and the people were divisive. They had all the traits that we have. Now, they were products of what we call failure engineering. Now, once the foundations of a nation are compromised, you cannot build with success except your foundation fathers sink a new foundation. Now, a lot of Americans have forgotten today that a lot of heated and sometimes even violent arguments took place in the 13 colonies between 1775 and 1776. What was the topic of a lot of these heated arguments? It was based on morality. The average person in the American colonies did not believe they were qualified to have a nation of their own because they were victims of failure engineering. And so the founding fathers had to prefer, number one, founding fathers have to find ingenious solutions to existing problems. The people had been corrupted. Human worth had been devalued. So what did they do that is worthy of emulation? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. much later on said something about the founding fathers of America.
He said, if our nation has done nothing more in its whole history than to create just two documents, its contribution to the civilization of the world would be imperishable. So the first of these documents is the Declaration of Independence, and the other is that which we are here to honor tonight in his speech. He was talking about the Emancipation Proclamation. But listen, without the Declaration of Independence, there would have been no Emancipation Declaration. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such forms as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patient sufferance of these colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former systems of government. What we call the American Declaration of Independence actually is an ingenious device. It's actually an anti-corruption device. If you listen to the preamble, it explains that there are certain foundations that have to do with the laws of God. And they had to lay a foundation to reverse engineer the inferiority and the corruption of the devaluation of human worth that was available in the British society then when they had some men who were superior and all the men who were inferior. So what did they do? Study that Declaration of Independence and you find out that one, they introduced God in his office as the creator, as a leveler for all men. And that's why they say things like, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. The truth is this, it is not self-evident that all men are created equal, because men are not born equal. But these men had a profound insight. They had an understanding, and they knew that they needed this leveler to be able to assure that everybody would have on unalienable rights, rights that were guaranteed to everybody, among which were, of course, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But there was a lot more than those three. They just mentioned and emphasized those three as a part of an anti-corruption device to embolden and renew a new and create a new American citizen who did not feel inferior to nobility or royalty or whatever. Now, did you also know, we need to understand the ingenuity of founding fathers. Do you realize that America is not really a democracy? America today is a democratic republic that is built on the laws of nature's God. Now, this creative capture, what you think America is, it's actually an amalgam. It's a creative capture based on a lot of study that was done into ancient times. They had studied authors like uh, Cicero, the, the Roman uh, philosopher, Polybius, the Greek philosopher. Um, they'd read a lot of books. And this was what informed their judgment to create a hybrid, which is, which is actually a democratic republic built on a foundation that recognizes the natural laws of God 
and God in his office as creator to level the playing field. Now, one of the founding fathers of America said this in 1814. He quoted something he had been saying before. I'm talking about John Adams. John Adams said, remember, democracy never lasts long. It soon wastes, exhausts, and murders itself. There never was a democracy yet that did not commit suicide. John Adams, it's penned in a letter to John Taylor, 15th of April, 1814. Now, number three trait of founding fathers, they pay attention to details. Let me quote John Adams again. He said, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Where there's immorality, that nation that attempts to practice the so-called American-style democracy is actually committing suicide. It is an impossibility. The founding fathers knew that, and they said so. On a fourth count, founding fathers have to have visionary planning. Not only visionary planning, they have to have engineering skills to build firewalls to protect the system and the foundation that is laid. They also have to have research backgrounds with accuracy. They must have deep maturity and there must be men who have integrity and character. Let's take, for instance, in 1789 at a meeting, Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson spent a lot of time discussing this particular issue. And uh, let me quote, Sir, they said, there are two passions which have a powerful influence in the affairs of men. These are ambition and avarice, the love of power and the love of money. Separately, each one of these has a great force in prompting men to action. Now, when you unite the two in the view of the same object, they have in many minds the most violent effects. Place before the eyes of such men a post of honor that shall at the same time be a place of profit, and they will move heaven and earth to obtain it. It's a nice way of saying they will kill to get there, and they will kill to stay there. And this is why the foundation engineers of America built firewalls into the system to make sure that if you came into political office, salaries were fixed in such a way that your motivation could not be pecuniary gain. Now, Thomas Jefferson also said, and I quote, if a nation expects to be ignorant and free in a state of civilization, it expects what never was and never will ever be. So education, the emphasis on education was deliberate. So when you have a nation where there's no adequate plans and provisions for education, it is impossible to practice the American style of democracy. The founding fathers knew this. James Madison said, if men were angels, there would be no government necessary. But if angels were to govern men, neither external nor internal controls on government would be necessary. But they knew that men were not angels. So what did they do? They assumed the worst and planned into the foundation with firewalls to prevent corruption in the future of a foundation they've laid. Samuel Adams said, neither the wisest constitution nor the wisest laws will secure the liberty and happiness of a people whose manners are universally corrupt. A people who have a corruption problem cannot build a successful democratic republic similar to that of the, the, the American experience. The founding fathers said these things in 1776. They laid these foundations. He went on to say he's therefore the truest friend to the liberty of his country who tries the most to promote its virtue and who so far as his power and influence extend will not permit, will not suffer a man to be chosen into any office of power and trust who is not a wise and virtuous honest man with proven tracks of integrity. Founding fathers lead this. Now, in 1789, there was a make or break conference that very few people ever realized that took place in America. At that time, the continental dollar was so inflated, it was not worth toilet paper. It was inflated almost out of existence. 
The economy was so deeply depressed that rioting had broken out. Just like the Nigerian example, New England, that part of America, Boston area, New England was threatening to succeed. Both England and Spain, as world powers of those of that day, were standing close by, ready to snatch up the disunited states at the first propitious moment. Now, how did they get past this? They put in foundation engineering at that 1780. Look, the, 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 the method that they adopted was an ingenious method where they would suspend committees and they would have something similar to the African palaver. In fact, that meeting lasted for four months. Officially, it would have been pegged to last two or three weeks. But they realized that to build consensus, to mold opinion, they needed to have time together to discuss these things together. And guess what? The founding fathers and many of the people who were in that conference borrowed money to stay there. So what is my conclusion? Listen to this. For foundation engineering, what are the kind of things that founding fathers must know, these specifics? Let's realize this. The United States Constitution, minus amendments, is 4,400 words. The Nigerian Constitution is 66,263 words already. A whole lot of verbiage. Now, the truth is this. Adding more words to the Nigerian Constitution will not help anybody. What did the founding fathers do? What they did was that they laid a foundation first before they put the Constitution on the foundation. What did they do? The Declaration of Independence in itself is just a 1,337 words, and it has never changed. You see, what we need to understand is that the founding fathers of Nigeria need to get a document that fishmongers, plumbers, electricians, food sellers, the farmer, can understand easily and can relate with. You see, all this talk about federal character and uh, constitution amendments and all that is lost on the average citizen and therefore does not invoke any passion. So Nigeria needs founding fathers who will help us with the right wisdom to put together a document that reflects the agreements that we all have in earnest. And I tell you something, once that is in place, then all the stuff we're talking about, the constitution, uh, federal, uh, true federation, and all that will then work evidently. But if you put the cart before the horse and we continue to agitate for things that only 5% of the country understand without taking pains to locate founding fathers and make sure that they put together for us something similar, a document similar to the American Declaration of Independence that sets the hearts of men on fire, we will continue to agitate for a long time not knowing that a program people who reject the algorithms will continue for centuries because the enslavement programs are designed to last for thousands of years on the average for 650 years. Nigeria is not yet 200 years old. We need this algorithm. We need to find our founding fathers who have what it takes to lay the foundation that the liberation fathers were not permitted to lay in their time.